Let's have a look at the question. H and J Manufacturing Company has identified a list of costs associated with its operation. The company is seeking your help with respect to classifying its costs into manufacturing costs, non-manufacturing, selling costs, and non-manufacturing administrative costs. In your answer booklet, state the classification for each cost item. An example has been provided for you in italics. The cost item, salary of factory supervisor, and the classification is given as manufacturing. The salary of chief accountant, non-manufacturing administrative. Leasing cost factory equipment, manufacturing. Depreciation on office furniture, non-manufacturing administrative. Salary on plant supervisor, manufacturing. Office stationery, non-manufacturing. Rental of delivery van, non-manufacturing selling. Fuel for factory equipment, manufacturing property taxes on office building non-manufacturing administrative plant utilities manufacturing sales commission non-manufacturing administrative or selling Part B, in times of inflation, the market prices of purchase material increases. Explain what happens to the following when a last in, first out, LIFO stock valuation method is used. One, the cost of raw material issued. Two, the value of closing inventory and three, profit. The answer to part B would be that the cost of raw materials used is at the higher prices. And therefore, the cost of materials used will be higher. Secondly, the closing inventory is at the lower prices. And third, the profit is understated. First, we should note that the total there should be 640, not 620 as shown. The Soka Engineering Company manufactures a range of products. Shown below are the budgeted total unit costs for one of the components and one of the products manufactured by the company. So, apparently this company is making this product, this component, and then using it in a product XYZ. So they want to know whether to buy the component outside or make it first, and then they want to know whether to accept a special order. So component ABC is incorporated into XYZ, manufactured and sold by the company. It is possible to purchase component ABC for 525 per unit from another company. The anticipated selling price of product XYZ per unit is 2750. Okay, okay. more than the production there. Yeah. The notes on the fixed overhead 
Okay, engineering company will incur 125 per unit, whether it purchases or manufactures component ABC. The company could avoid spending 280 per unit if produce product XYZ was not produced. All right. Uh, you can't really tell from the information given here whether this is an opportunity course or an avoidable course. Uh, seeing the word avoid here, I will treat it as an avoidable course and hence it would be a course saving. Advise the management of the company whether it would be profitable to make or buy component ABC. Accept a special offer of seventeen fifty per unit from an outside company for product XYZ. Provide a justification for your answer. Nine marks. The relevant course of the decision to make would be the variable course of 180, 160, and 80. Uh, the 125, since it would appear in both of these columns, we will exclude it all together since it would not make any impact on the decision. I have decided to treat the 280 as avoidable course. Therefore, it would be a course saving if we buy the item. So the cost of, the relevant cost of making is 420 whereas the cost of relevant cost of buying is 525 less the cost saving of 280 gives you 245 so you should buy the component there will be a cost saving of 420 minus 245 equals 175 dollars The marginal cost of the special order would be the variable cost of producing it plus the cost of the component, which will give us a total marginal cost of 1385. The offer should be accepted since the marginal variable cost is less than the offer price. The business will make a profit of 1750 minus 385 equal 365 per unit. Part D. Crawl Company Limited is a manufacturing company which applies overhead to its products based on direct labor hours. The accounting record for Crawl Company Limited for 2015 was as follows. Budgeted production overhead, 875,000. Actual production overhead, 925,000. Budgeted direct labor hours, 103,000. 125 hours, actual Direct labor was 112,700 hours. The production overhead costs incurred in December 2015 was $58,000, and the number of direct labor hours used was 7,800. We are asked to compute the predetermined overhead rate for 2015 and to calculate the over under applied 
overhead for December 2015. The answer to part D, the PUHR would be equal to the budgeted overheads of 875,000 divided by the direct labor hours budgeted 103,125 hours gives us a rate of 850 per hour. Second part, the overhead is applied would be 112,700, that's the actual hours, multiply by $8.50 that we calculated up there, gives us 957,950 as applied overhead. Now the 957,950 is greater than actual overheads of 925,000. Therefore, overheads are over applied. Overheads are over applied by 957,950 minus 925,000 gives us $32,950 over applied. That brings up this morning. Question is based on activity based question again. So you can see this is a popular topic with um, the examiners and we are asked to calculate some activity rates. So Brown, Smith and Williams uh, has recently engaged the services of a cost accountant who has recommended that the firm use activity-based costing method for charging overhead to each client. So they're only going to use it for charging the overhead, right? The firm was using the traditional method of applied overhead using direct labor hours. Okay, so they were using traditional costing that is would be job costing and direct labor hours as the base for charging the overhead. The cost accountant has prepared the following cost information relating to the law firm's overhead. We have a column here with the activity, research course, case management course, pre-trial course and trial course. And overhead costs for these items and the cost driver for each one of them. Okay, so that they can look at the computations. The research course is going to be 880 thousand divided by 125 and that gives us 704 seven dollars and four cents per hour okay that comes from um, here All right, the case management would be 975 divided by 86,000. Again, we will get $11.34 per hour. So that is coming from here. The pre-trial course is 780. Divided uh, something um, missing there. Seven hundred eighty thousand divided by sixty-four thousand, right? It's missing the sixty-four thousand. 
This is what it should work out to this figure here, 1219 per hour. Trial course is 1650 divided by 180. Uh, it's coming from here. Right. We'll get 917 per hour. So the activity rates quite simple. All the information given, you just have to be able to divide, right? Oop, okay. now the firm wants a computer a legal bill using the activity rates. Okay. The firm charges a profit margin of 33 uh, to again notice the uh, so profit margin. So the markup would be this would be one third, the markup would be a quarter. Okay, one over three. One right, okay. The so Hupaki, a client of Brown and Smith and Williams, has incurred the following direct and indirect costs. So we have direct costs here, indirect costs here. And we are going to calculate how much is the bill. Okay, all of the direct course is taken just as it is. Yeah. So we will add them up. We'll add up all these here. And we'll get this figure here. Okay, then we apply the activity rates to the others. The research course, we have 1580 hours, and our activity rate is seven dollars and four cents. Um, we have seven dollars and eight cents here. So you have a typo, right? We'll get 11.86. Okay, now, now these things happen when you um, when you write out some an answer and then you type in it back. Sometimes you make a typo, right? Um, so you are not advised to write out the answer and then write it back again in a email. Okay, so the case management, we get 27.64 here, multiply by 11.34 here, case management. So we got these here. It works out to 31,344. The pre trial course 3,443 hours, and we multiply. 
multiply by the 1219 from here. Three four three by twelve nineteen forty one nine seventy. Then we have the trial course. Four two eight five hours by nine seventeen. And that gives us thirty nine two ninety three. Okay, so this four two eight five nine seventeen. But we add it up, we get the total cost. Okay, and like I said, we can't use the um thirty percent because mm -hmm. It's a three hundred percent is on this figure here. Okay, so it would be go out to a quarter of this figure here. Did I say that correctly or I say it backwards. It would be to the three hundred percent of this figure here. Or, okay, and anyway, you have to convert this figure to the margin to get the, the, um, the markup to get it on this figure here. Uh, right, so if we divide this by three, you should get this figure here. And if you divide by four, you will get this figure here, right? So in order to get this, this here, you have to take a quarter of this or something like that first. Hmm, is that correct? Right. So John is planning the part B now. John is planning all oh, this thing mark up already boy. John is planning to mass produce wooden furniture for a growing market in Europe. He's not planning with not familiar with accounting and would like to employ the process costing system to track his cost of production. Briefly outline the five steps involved in preparing the process costing worksheet. Five marks. Okay. And then we have to suggest an appropriate cost driver for some activities. We look at part B. All right. The five steps you have in it, it could be divided into this, these five steps. If you want to divide it into five, if you're going to divide it into four, then you'll um, well, join these two here. But the first step is to account for the physical units that you put into production. And from the physical units, you will calculate the equivalent units. For the period. And then step three is to calculate the cost per equivalent unit. This is where you take the cost and you divide it by the equivalent unit from here. Then we summarize the total cost to account for the period. Again, we are accounting for the total cost for the period. And then we assign the total cost that we have summarized here. 
to completed units and the work in progress or work in process. Okay, so it's a, a logical process. You have to get this first. And then you will divide it up into equivalent units. Then you take the course that you are given and you divide it by the equivalent unit to get the course per equivalent unit. Then you summarize the course. And then you assign the course to the completed unit and the working process. So it's an easy process once you learn the course sheet would follow this pattern. The process course and sheet. All right. The next question, part C, asks for to name a course driver. All right, for each one of these here. Okay, what it means is, what are you going to use to allocate these? Or to apportion these the departments, these overheads. So janitorial services, um, you could use something like floor area. The bigger the department in terms of floor area, the more of the service it would use. Okay, then we have advertising and marketing. We can do that on the basis of sales, dollar, or business revenue. Okay, the advertising should be related to the um, sales volume, volume of sales. Okay, how well you promote your product, or how much you produce, promote your product, should determine what your seals are. Lighting and air condition. All right, the number of kilowatt use. So each department, you're looking at how much electricity it use in terms of kilowatts, and you will apportion it the lighting and the a condition overhead. Uh, maintenance of building. Again, that could be done on the floor area. The size of each department. All right. Anything that is related to the expenditure. Okay. The course driver. It must be related to one of these here, to, to the like janitorial services. It must have some relationship with it. You can just choose a course driver that has no relation to, to apportion it, right? The course driver is the base that you divided by. Okay. Last part of the question. So just two merits and two demerits of the ABC system employed by Janet. Okay. Um, this, this is not phrased properly, right? It suggests this piece by um, by Janet would tend to make you think that you want to look at here and um, see what she is doing and state to advantage or disadvantage of that. 
but um, I don't think that is what it looking to do. What you want is of ABC system on the whole, not just by what Janet is doing. Okay. So with that in mind, I provided a, a whole list here of the merits of ABC, so you could um, read them through. ABC provides a more accurate cost per unit, than, that is more accurate than a traditional costing. As a result, pricing, sales, strategy, performance, management, and decision making should be improved. Okay. So what you will notice with this here, when you check in the merits or the advantages of it, is that it, it does have an uh, actual advantage over the traditional costing system. It's more accurate and it, um, it can also help with a, a lot of other things. And they are, in fact, merits. They are very little the merits of the system because it's only really in comparison with traditional costing. It provides much better insight into what drives overhead costs because of the cost drivers. You're not just using one like direct labor or machine hours using a number of cost drivers for cost of activities. So ABC recognizes that overhead costs are not all related to production and sales volume, but are also transaction based, right? Transaction there is a reference to activity. Okay, so it, is that just related to the production? and you could take up the total costs from it, from production and sales volume, but um, it's also related to the activities. And sometimes a unit of the service may not utilize some of the activities. In many businesses, overhead costs are a significant portion of total costs and management needs to understand the drivers of overhead costs in order to manage the business properly. Okay. It can be applied to derive realistic costs in a complex business environment, right? Where you, that's where one way you have plenty of activities, let's say like a hospital or something where it, it can get very difficult to cost the service. ABC can be applied to all overhead costs, not just indirect. It can also be applied to the production overheads, right? ABC can be used just as easily in service costing. All right, that's what I was just talking about. Hospital, um, restaurants, and anyway, providing a service. He addressing personal services and things like that. Uh, improves all processes. Uh, waste is identified. Could cut it off. We have two um, on this side here. Pricing is better organized and it can be applied to the entire business. So, all those are um, things you can pick any two you wish to. But I would suggest in preparation for your exam, you learn about five or six of them. Right, like I said, you have very few demerits of ABC. Right, uh, will be limited 
ABC will be of limited benefit if the overhead costs are primarily volume related. Okay, so um, if it's related to the amount of sales, then ABC would be very um, thing. You would still have to use more of a traditional cost in than ABC. If it is important, possible to allocate all overhead to specific activities, right? That is one of the um, things. Your overhead course, particular items of overhead course might not be related to any activity at all. Right? The choice of both activities and course drivers might be inappropriate. Right? Okay, choosing the um, activities, identifying them, and then getting an appropriate course driver could prove to be a problem as well. Right, so basically what you'll find the uh, demerits have to do with is the volume and um, not all activities could be identified and related to the uh, course drivers. Module three. Planning and decision making. We have before us all the data for Module 3, 2016, Keep Accounting, Paper 2. And um, I'm not going to be reading all of this on the video, but I have read it and I will leave the reading of it up to you and go right into the answering of the question. And before we do that, let's see what here. Instructions, additional information. So I will go in required. Prepare an inventory purchase budget for each of the months October, November, and December. Part B. Prepare a schedule of expected cash disbursement for inventory purchases for each of the months October, November, and December. And part C, prepare a schedule of budgeted cash collections for each of months October, November, and December. And part D, briefly discuss three uses of the budget in a typical organization and briefly describe the three styles of budgeting. Part E the purchases budget, uh, the uh, required to do a purchase budget for the three months ending October, November, December, that's the last quarter of the year and uh, I have brought over here the information from the question that we will need and uh, similarly over here. Um, you cannot do a purchases budget if you don't know this formula on the side here. There are some things in accounting that you have to memorize. This is one of it. Okay, so you start with the desired ending inventory. You add the cost of sales or you could do it the other way around. Start with the cost of sales and add the desired ending inventory and you'll get your total requirements. And then you would less from that the opening inventory or inventory and you get your purchases figure how much you need to purchase for the particular period okay now let's look at the figures themselves we are told that the inventory on hand at the end of each month must be 12.5 percent of the cost of sales in the following month Inventory as of 30 of September 2016 is $32,812.50. So you can ignore the 50 cents, drop them off, round the figures because this is a budget. Okay, the figures are estimated. And uh, okay, so this $32,812 or $813 will come in here as your beginning inventory for October. It's coming over from September. And 
the open desire and then inventory in fact is 12.5 percent of the next month's force of sale so it will be 12 by 12.5 percent of 393,750 and that will give it what the 49,219 to that we add the cost of sales from here and we get 262,500 plus 49,219 equals 311,719 minus the beginning inventory and we get the purchases here okay now the desired ending inventory for the first month becomes the beginning inventory for the next month and we go through the whole process again with the figures the desired ending inventory here would be 12 and a half percent of the next month cost of sale would be 218,750 we will get 27,344 we add that on to the November's cost of sale 393,750 and we get 421.94 that's our total requirements we minus the beginning inventory what we got from up here and we get our purchases so November then we do the same thing again all over the end inventory here becomes the open the open inventory here and we take 12 and a half percent of the next month January 175 we add on the 218.750 from December get the total requirement and then we minus the open inventory and we get the purchases for December okay so that's it for your purchases budget remember you must know the formula here so memorize it it may come in your exam but b expected cash payments for inventory we are asked to prepare budget for cash payments for the inventory or purchasing payments all right i've brought over here the purchases from the last answer party 278906, 471875, and 213281. Right? And um, over here, they give us how they require to have this budget made out. For inventory purchases, 65% is paid in the month in which the goods are purchased, and the remainder is paid in the following month. Accounts payable at the end of September for inventory purchases in is 78,000 so we have two cycles a 65% cycle where it is paid in the month in which the goods are purchased and uh, the remainder the other 35% would be paid the following month okay the 35% and the 65% must equal 100% this 78,000 is 35% from September that is come to be paid in the second month which is October okay so we come to the expected cash flow and we can um, or cash payments and we can head it up like this once again three columns one for October November and December and we put in the purchases that we calculated previously and our first cycle would be 65 percent we can calculate 65 percent of each one of them and uh, the next cycle would be 35 percent however it does not come in this line it goes in the other column right this 78,000 is from September 35 percent that has remained unpaid and look where we add these two together we will get the 259,289 as the payment for for October in November the 65% from here plus the 35% from there the second cycle is 91,617 I will add the two together we get 404,336 for the payment in November then in December 
we have the 65% from the first cycle 213, 281, there's a 138, 32, and then we have the 35% remaining from November here, which is added on, and we get 303,788 as the payment for December. Okay, so this is a nice little way you can put it together if you didn't know how to um, do it. And, uh, uh stick around the part c is coming up part c requires a budgeted cash collection again we can head up as we did october november and december and we can use the same cycle approach as we did in for the purchasing for the sales we have this is how we are to make the budget 25 percent of cash is collected in the month of the sale 50% is collected in the first month following the sale and 23% in the second month following the sale and the remaining 2% is uncollectable. Okay, so you are not going to collect 2%. Sales for August and September were 200,000 and 250,000 respectively. Okay, so some of these would be collected in our period. Right, notably the 50% and the 23%, the 2% will never be collected. So when we add these three cycles together, we should get 98%, not 100%. Okay, so I've brought over the sales figure here from the, the question, the data given in the income statements. And uh, um, this is how we're gonna collect it. The first cycle would be 25% of whatever sales we have for the month so we can calculate 25 percent of that okay then the second cycle is 50 percent of the previous month right so that would be uh 50 percent for for october it's going to be 50 percent of september 50 percent of uh that is 250,000 and we'll get the 125,000 here and the 200,000 it will be 23 percent of that and we get 46,000 here so we add this together and we get 264,750 as our collections for October and we have the same thing up in, in, in November 140,000 is 25% of the 562, 500, and then we will get 50% of uh, the 375 here, and that makes us 187,500, and then 23% of the 250,000 gives us. Uh, 50,750 and when we add them together we will get 378,875 in December uh, we have the sales being 312,550 78,125 would be 25% in the month and then we have the 50% from here 281 250 and the 23% from here 80,250 making up a total of 445,625 we will expect to collect in the December so um, that's how we would approach something like this uh, again we can Go through the figures on your own just in case i made a, a, an error but um, stick around for part d part d asks us for three uses of a typical budget of a budget in a typical organization and uh, i will give you more than three i'll give you about six or seven so the first one is planning 
budget is a formal means by which an investigation leads to a financial statement of future intent. The formal aspect of preparing a budget through a budget committee provides for participation in the planning process. Coordination. Organizations are complex arrangements of separate parts whose coordination is necessary to achieve the best results for the organization as a whole. The budget will act as a form of coordination of human effort by allowing separate parts of the organization within the firm to work together to form plans and monitor results. So that's coordination, communication. The budget can be used to communicate plans and control information throughout the organization. A budget could be used for motivation. A budget provides a target which can influence aspiration levels and motivation within an organization. Okay, that is more or less self-explanatory. A budget serves to control specific operations, activities, or groups and to prevent wastage and inefficiency. Next, we'll have performance evaluation. The budget can be used to measure the performance of individuals or groups by monitoring the ability to achieve a budget could be used to authorize expenditure or the pursuit of certain initiatives. Once the budget has been approved, it can become a permission to spend. It requires us to give three styles of budgeting. The first style of budgeting is what is called the impose budgeting or authoritarian type of budgeting. This style is most frequently used in centralized organizations where the key budget decisions are made by top management and lower level workers follow instruction. So the budget is imposed on the lower level workers by upper management. It is often described as the top-down approach. The advantages of this approach are that it is easy to implement removes bias towards certain departments and facilitates coordination. The disadvantage is that it cuts out the expertise that resides at the lower levels of the organization. Next, we have participative budgeting. In participative budgeting, Individuals other than top level managers are allowed an input. This style is frequently used in decentralized organizations where the budget is built upward. Okay, so lower levels of the management or lower levels of the organization are allowed to participate and the budget is built up from underneath to the top. And this approach is described as bottom up. The advantages of this approach are that it leads to high degree of motivation and it exploits the knowledge of what is and what is not feasible. The disadvantages are that it can encourage bias and excessive claims from individuals. And the third type of budget is the negotiated budget. This type uses a combination of the other two approaches. The advantages is that it attempts to achieve the advantage of the imposed and participative style while avoiding some of the obvious disadvantages. Okay, so the major disadvantage is that it is difficult and time consuming to do this. Okay, now this brings us to the end of this video and uh, if you have found it helpful i will uh, ask you to give it thumbs up if you don't like it you give it a thumbs down and uh, i hope to see you in the next video